hey everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm gonna show you guys how to solve questions about nephrotic and nephritic syndromes i'm gonna show you uh, some ambus questions I'm gonna do them together and give you a nice scheme especially that renal is making a big proportion of the tests according to the new content outline so let's get started all right guys so here as you can see in front of you is the glomerulus i'm just gonna briefly uh, show you the glomerular filtration barrier is made up of the endothelial cells and the basement membrane called the glomerular basement membrane of the endothelial cells and then those yellow cells are called podocytes and in cross section they all look like this which means that blood has to pass through these three layers in order to get into the Bowman space and make a filtrate which would later be urine so remember guys this will benefit me when I talk about a nephrotic syndrome and I'm gonna show you why there is more proinuria with nephrotic syndrome uh, so you can see here that the basement membrane is negatively charged right and remember that proteins in the blood are also negatively charged and in the filtrate negatively charged and so there is some sort of repulsion naturally within the uh, glomerular barrier so that no proteins can escape into the filtrate so no albumin should be lost nor any other protein if this barrier is intact now let's see what will happen in nephrotic syndrome if this barrier is not intact so if this barrier is uh, like this negative charge is not there because podocytes are damaged then there is no repulsion and therefore the proteins can easily pass through those pores and get into the filter and we lose protein so this picture shows you actually a very nice picture uh, representing the difference between nephritic and nephrotic syndrome so this is the normal healthy barrier with the endothelium the basement membrane and the podocytes so this is like no red blood cells nor protein should escape at all because of the negative charge that repels the proteins and because of the small size of pores that does not allow red blood cells and there and because we have an intact barrier here now imagine if this is damaged due to inflammation because of immune complex deposition that activates neutrophils uh, it's called type 3 hypersensitivity when you have immune complexes that bring in cytokines which, which bring in neutrophils and damage the basement membrane so if this barrier is damaged then we have created a space for the red blood cells to escape and that's why you get hematuria now at the same time this uh, little space that we have created or opening can also allow some proteins to escape and when these red blood cells go down the tubules they form casts as I'm going to show you guys in this scheme and because now the glomerulus is not filtering properly you get salt and water retention with edema and hypertension. And so this is the triad of nephritic syndrome. I'm going to show you how to memorize it soon. Now, nephrotic syndrome, on the other hand, the problem is not with inflammation. It's mainly with damage of the barrier that removes the negative charge. So the podocytes are damaged, and so we don't we no longer have a negative charge and so there is not much that is physically wrong you know with the barrier the barrier itself you know the anatomically it's not damaged unlike nephritic syndrome which is inflammation here the barrier itself is there but we lost the negative charge therefore the proteins can easily escape as you can see those uh, green dots represent protein so we got significant proinuria almost all the serum proteins coming out albumin and immunoglobulins 
anti-thrombin 3 and that's why there's heavy proinuria up to 4 plus and because of heavy proinuria there is heavy edema because we know that proteins are responsible for the um oncotic pressure and so the mechanism of edema in nephrotic syndrome why is it so severe in nephrotic syndrome and not the same with nephritic because of so much proinuria that decreases the oncotic pressure but the cause of edema in nephritic syndrome which is not that much as in nephrotic but there's still some edema the cause here in nephritic syndrome is increased capillary permeability and this is a question that can, uh, they can ask you about on USMLE the mechanism of edema and they will describe the picture of nephrotic syndrome they wouldn't tell you but they will describe the picture and you gotta say it's decreased oncotic and the same goes with nephritic syndrome so now guys I'm gonna show you how to differentiate in a question stem nephritic syndrome from nephrotic syndrome based on labs alone so, with nephritic syndrome, guys, like I said, there is a physical defect which can allow red blood cells and these go down tubules to become casts. So, red blood cells, which is hematuria in the clinical picture, red blood cell casts equals nephritic syndrome. RBCs, RBC casts. R, R. With nephrotic syndrome, it, uh, F, F, frothy urine, fatty casts. The urine becomes frothy because of the fat. And if you watched pathoma, uh, in fact, because of the heavy proinuria, the liver starts compensating by making more uh, proteins, including those lipoproteins, and that's why you get a lot of fat. So fatty, uh, frothy urine, fatty cast. Why is the urine frothy? Because of the fat. Why do we have a lot of uh, lipoproteins? Because the heavy proinuria, the liver is compensating. So we always remember 4 plus. Frothy urine, fatty casts, 4 plus. That's nephrotic. For nephritic, it's bleeding. Imagine nephritic, I'm bleeding. Red blood cell, hematuria, bleeding in urine, red blood cell casts. Okay? So this is how to figure out from the lab picture alone. Now, from the clinical picture, if you want to figure out whether this is nephritic or nephrotic from the clinical picture alone. So, first off, guys, I told you that nephritic syndrome, I'm not filtering well because the glomerulus is inflamed. If you're not filtering well, you're going to accumulate water and salt and it's going to lead to hypertension. The key here with nephritic syndrome, even more so than with nephrotic syndrome, is hypertension because there is more renin with nephritic. Now, because I told you before, you're bleeding in urine. You got red blood cells in urine. That's why it's going to be cola colored. So whenever they mention a hypertensive uh, child with cola urine, like he's bleeding in urine, red blood cells, red blood cell cast. That's nephritic. And by the way, red blood cells, red blood cell casts, they can also call it nephritic sediment, which means that urine analysis suggests nephritic syndrome. Now, with nephrotic syndrome, I told you guys there is heavy proinuria that decreases oncotic pressure so much. It's 4 plus. Proinuria is 4 plus or 3 plus. And that's why you get edema. Edema here is more severe than with nephritic. And the key to recognizing that edema is caused by a renal problem is that you find it's periorbital. Now, most other types of edema seen with other, uh, like liver failure or heart failure, will mainly be lower limb edema, right? But if you see, it's lower limb and periorbital is almost specific to the kidney. And they can also get, uh, you know, ascites. It's mostly generalized with nephrotic syndrome. And... I told you guys before that you're, we are losing so much protein. So we are losing so much protein causes edema. And we are losing so much immunoglobulins, which are also proteins. And this can increase the risk of infection. And we are also losing an important protein and also an anticoagulant called antithrombin-3. And this antithrombin-3 uh, inhibits 
active factor 10, which means that it's a natural anticoagulant. If we are losing it, then we have a high risk of thrombosis. And usually, if they want you like to make the question a little harder, they will get you a case of uh, you know, sudden hematuria in a patient who had nephrotic syndrome for a long time. You gotta suspect renal vein thrombosis in such a case. Very high yield. I, this question was repeated a lot. So, yeah, uh, let's uh, do some AMBOSS questions to reinforce that. Um, AMBOSS questions with you about nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. The first thing I want you to do when solving these questions to look at the labs and use the scheme I told you about. Look, if you find um, uh, blood, we found here blood, and we found red blood cell cast, like I told you, it must be nephritic. We have red blood cells, red blood cell casts. That's nephritic, you're bleeding from the glomerulus. The protein here is not that much, unlike uh, with nephrotic, which is uh, four plus or something, this is two plus. So I know I'm approaching here nephritic syndrome. And you can see that there is uremia and increased creatinine, which indicates there is a renal problem. And a seven-year-old girl. So I'm having a case of nephritic syndrome. So let's see. She's born because of generalized fatigue and dark urine. Cola urine. Remember, bleeding urine. Four weeks ago, she was treated with topical mupersin for a skin infection. Which... A uh, type of nephritic syndrome follows uh, skin infections or four weeks after. It's usually streptococcal. So that's post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Even without finishing off the rest of the stem, I already diagnosed, right? Now, her brother is confusing you that her brother had nephrotic syndrome. Her blood pressure is a little high. So, yeah, there's hypertension. You can see the edema here is not that much, but periorbital is specific to renal edema. So he's asking you about the uh, microscopic picture, and we know that um, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis leads to subepithelial immune complex deposition. This is because the uh, you know we have antigens and we have antibodies, and those antibodies form immune complexes antibody antigen complex and those are uncleared by the immune system and so they deposit under the membrane and these give a fluorescence on immunofluorescence and this is the cause of the type 3 hypersensitivity reaction that happens to the glomerulus and the inflammation that damages it and this uses complement and that's why complement will be accumulated here as well. I might make another video showing you the microscopic picture of each and the immunofluorescence of each disease, but I'm focusing here now on how to approach these questions. Next up, all right, I'm going to look at the lab's first guy here. We got four plus proteins and fatty casts, numerous. So four plus and fatty casts, that's nephrotic syndrome, right? Okay, and his urea nitrogen is very high, creatinine is normal, albumin is very low, guys. It should be from 3.5 to 5.5. This is very low, which means he's losing so much protein. I mean, I'm expecting here to see a lot of edema in this eight-year-old boy. So bilateral ankle swelling that occurred overnight, very short, you know, onset. He has stopped wearing socks because they feel too tight. He has diabetes and uh, blood pressure is normal. Uh, you can see there, the hypertension is not so significant with nephrotic syndrome. There is scrotal edema and two plus pitting edema at the lower extremities. You can see here that the edema is more generalized because we're losing a lot of protein. So this must be nephrotic syndrome. He's treated with prednisone, which is a corticosteroid, and it shows significant improvement. What is the most common type of nephrotic syndrome in children that has excellent response to steroids? It must be minimal change disease. And we call it minimal change because there's not so much, um, you know, a pathology on light microscopy. We don't see much. All right, guys. Um, next up. So this last question is so tricky, and it has the part I told you about with nephrotic. I'm going to show you guys now that 4 plus protein must be nephrotic syndrome regardless of the level of blood. If you see 4 plus, 
then it must be nephrotic, all right? The protein to creatinine ratio in urine means like when it's that high, it's too high, it's 7, it should be less than 0.2. It means there's so much protein in urine versus creatinine. Like we know that creatinine is a waste product. It should be more than protein in urine. Like there should be no protein in urine and there should be a lot of creatinine in urine. But here it's kind of reversed, right? It indicates there is... Uh, proinuria and you see here guys we have hypoalbuminemia we have in uremia and increased creatinine serum and lactate dehydrogenase is too high whenever you find high LDH you know cells are being damaged it, whether it's infarction or hemolysis you know cells are being damaged when you see a high LDH so what's wrong here what I've just figured out from this from labs alone is that this patient has nephrotic syndrome and has some sort of cell damage somewhere taking place and he's telling you here that two weeks ago her serum creatinine concentration was 1.5 and her blood urea nitrogen was 19 which means they're getting worse right you can see here the numbers so what's the next step this is a next step question so a 28 year old woman comes to the ER four hours after the sudden onset of bilateral flank pain and nausea and she knows blood in her urine which means she she didn't used to have that and that indicates that it's actually nephrotic syndrome she used to have nephrotic syndrome and then suddenly she got this right and gradually worsening edema she was diagnosed with membranous nephropathy five months ago. So she already has nephrotic syndrome for which is being treated, right? But only now, four hours ago, she's getting this. And this is what's causing her blood in the urine. Therefore, that's why I told you don't like... Uh, stress much on the blood you see here because once you see 4 plus protein, you know she has nephrotic syndrome. All right, blood pressure is not that high and a physical exam shows a distended abdomen because she's having ascites. It's a nephrotic syndrome, bilateral flank tenderness, and pitting edema. So what's wrong here? This is what I told you guys. Nephrotic syndrome. There's heavy proinuria that makes you lose antithrombin 3, which is an anticoagulant. And so if we are losing an anticoagulant, we have a hypercoagulable state. So this patient must have had thrombosis somewhere, right? And this thrombosis is obviously in the kidney because she's presenting with flank pain, right? And that's what's causing her increased LDH because the kidney cells are being damaged, right? Hypercoagulability usually leads to venous thrombosis. But when you have atherosclerosis or, you know, a platelet problem, it usually leads to arterial, um, you know, thrombosis. But venous thrombosis is associated with increased coagulation, right? But a platelet function problem, like... Um, problem with platelets or atherosclerosis is usually causes arterial thrombosis. So here I know it's renal vein thrombosis. If she's presenting with bilateral flank pain, so it must be bilateral renal vein thrombosis. So how can we find that out? We should see a filling defect of contrast, but we know that uh, most contrasts are nephrotoxic. So what we can do in such a case is an, an investigation that does not require contrast, which is MR venography. This, guys, is a five hammer question and it deserves these five hammers. You first need to diagnose her as nephrotic syndrome and then find out she has renal vein thrombosis and then find out the, the CT angio doesn't work or um, any of these that require contrast wouldn't work uh, or wouldn't be gold standard because of the contrast induced nephropathy. All right, guys, so that's how you solve this question. I uh, hope you benefited from this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. All the best, guys.